Okay, match two. Let's uh, <clears throat> let's get this show on the road. I think I recognize this uh, this opponent's username, and I think they are on burn. Um, <clears throat> not one hundred percent sure, but <clears throat> I think this hand is okay. It's burn. Nothing spectacular. Uh, it's not like burn is definitely one of the one of the uh, decks that uh, companionless has an advantage because we do have the option to play a dragon's claw. Although it looks like maybe this is not burn. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I will play Valakut uh, Awakening because it's uh, just a bit harder to cycle than Forgotten Cave. And there's a decent chance we'll put uh, Forgotten Cave into play anyway. Excuse the alarm. For some reason, I can't seem to turn the microphone off. Uh, oh, that was unfortunate because that was going to be my turn three play. Um, I'm actually kind of thinking to uh, to try to go for um, Valakut Awakening uh, at this point. So I'm going to play Forgotten Cave instead of Awakening because. Um, because we've lost the ability to pitch uh, Flame Slash through Pyromancer. We may want to do that through Valakut. Okay, okay. Um, I'm thinking to maybe just uh, Lightning Bolt it on a turn and then play Bone Crusher Giant. Um, well, they've got red, so maybe not. Hmm. Kind of uh, not sure what exact track to take. Stomping obviously is better value. Yeah, you know what? I'll I'll, I'll just stomp. <clears throat> um, so the question is to play Valakut tapped or not. I actually do think Flame Slash is going to come in handy. So this could be wrong, but I'll play Valakut uh, tapped. See, there's always a surprising amount of decisions to make here. Of course, you know, since I played Valakut Tap, I'm kind of um, regretting not cycling Forgotten Cave, but, you know, obviously I didn't know we were going to draw this fourth this fourth land. And obviously we want the uh, Flame Slash to deal with the um, deal with the Batter Skull. And because we're probably going to have to deal with the Batter Skull next turn, um, I will play this and Bone Crusher. And if both of these eat a removal spell, then of course it was correct to use Stomp. And there's a Lightning Bolt, which we knew about. Probably Fatal Push coming. Yeah, or Terminate. Interesting full art here. Ah, so they have a Season Power Master too. Well, they're going to have to discard their Batter Skull, so... Or oh, they got Shadow Sphere, not uh, Batter Skull. Interesting, Amber Cleave. I guess because they knew they'd have to discard it. Okay. Uh, so here is the uh, plan. We will, uh, of course, Firebolt the... Uh, yeah. We'll put Obosh to hand. They're empty-handed. <coughs> and uh, probably Lightning Bolt. Whatever it is, they try to equip with Shadow Sphere. Or they're going to play a uh, Batter Skull, of course. Uh, what is this, actually? Oh, Croxa. Um... I guess we can discard Lightning Bolt because we kind of want to play Obosh and then Flame Slash. Um, I guess we could uh, hold up Lightning Bolt instead. <coughs> Alright, take four, that's what it is.
I guess we might as well Lightning Bolt now, just in case they've got like Terminate. This is our own Crocs of sorts, I guess. Okay, so let's uh, let's see another Crocs. Of. All right, well, bye bye, Forgotten Cave. Um, but they don't get to drop um, Batter Skull at least. I can respect that they want to they want to discard whatever I've got in my hand. Question is how to best manage um, Obosh, and I think I could attack if they've got like Lightning Bolt. That that could be a disaster. On the other hand, holding back doesn't exactly seem like a winning strategy either. Um, they didn't equip Shadow Sphere. I don't know what that means? Could mean that they've got uh, Colagon's command. That would not be good. I guess we'll uh, play around Kuligan's command slightly. I kind of want this to go face, but I don't know. Pressuring, pressuring their life total seems, you know, I mean, like forcing them into a situation where they have to block Obosh seems not bad either. Not sure why they didn't equip anything with Shadow Sphere. Yeah, Colagon's command, of course. Okay, yeah, we call it what we called it. Oh, maybe yeah, actually we kind of saw that, so maybe maybe we shouldn't have uh, hit the Pyromancer since we kind of saw that they had a uh, Colagon's command. Uh, but they would have just blocked with Obosh anyway. And what we're supposed to do is not attack. Well, pretty much any burn spell deals with the uh, germ token at least. However, um, the uh, elemental token can be kind of problematic. Okay, well, let's actually kind of hope that they double block. But lightning bolt is good because it means that if they don't block, we can uh, bolt when they attack. Okay, well, let's uh, deal with this here. <clears throat> Probably gonna want to go for another Croxa as soon as they can. One, two, three, four. The one card away. You know, basically, Obosh is the only reason why we're in this game for what it's worth. Man, I wish I would have held on. I wish I would have cycled that Forgotten Cave now. But hey, what can you do? Gotta try to get in there. I mean, if they got Lightning Bolt, then they got Lightning Bolt. We could have. We could have another Lightning Bolt too. Okay. Might as well play this out because they're gonna play Croxa. We may end up having a block Croxa. But we'll see. Then again, another any like lightning bolt or flame slash can also deal with it, which is nice. Uh, I didn't see any downside to them just attacking once before equipping it, but I don't know. Um Problem is, is they're gonna atta attach Batter Skull to it. On the other hand, if they do that, it'll be an 11 11. Um, Bone Crusher plus Obosh does actually block it. I'm almost wondering if, like, Main Deck uh, Relic might be the way to go because, like, there's very, there's still very powerful things you can do with your graveyard. 
and uh, you know, you, you know, like we we could punish that in the main deck. <clears throat> um, I mean, it does have trample, so I'm kind of thinking maybe we should block it. Six, uh, six plus eight is fourteen. This will also soak up five, six, seven, eight damage, so we don't die. I mean, yeah, we'll see if they've got. Obviously, like blocking with the tokens does nothing because six, seven, eight. Yeah. I mean, hey, at least we stopped an eleven, eleven monstrosity. Well, this can help with the batter skull equip. Okay, so we've got a ways to go, but um, if we draw like more season pyromancers, it's not like completely unthinkable. We might be able to come back. But definitely, though, Obosh was our was a very good uh, ticket to. To potentially uh, taking this, and I'm definitely gonna flash back the tokens. Man, drawing drawing more lands definitely is not where we want to be. We already played three of our utility lands, which is unfortunate. Right, I'm gonna just hold a, a land in hand, just uh, just because they might flash back Croxa first somehow, and then. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We really want a lightning bolt in response to the batter skull equip. That would be ideal. Okay, let's do that. Could just equip the shadow sphere. They're at the point where they can return Batter Skull and play it, so we're going to draw, like, I don't know, some Ender Runner Season Pyromancer. That's not bad. You know, as far as, like, <clears throat> as far as cards that semi give us a chance, Bone Crusher is definitely one of the better ones. I'll just play this out because a pretty decent chance for getting a croc set. <clears throat> and you know, bluffing value is minimal, um, and we could bluff with whatever random card we draw next turn if it comes to that. Yeah, and of course, we get croc set, but it wouldn't have mattered because the land, uh, we still would have taken three from the land. Yeah, Crux is still a powerful card. It kind of makes me wonder. We have played, we have dabbled in some main deck, uh, main deck relic versions in the past. Um, it's a little bit, little bit of a conflict with Lava Dart. Um, I don't know though. I don't know if it's actually necessary. Definitely, it's good for here in the sideboard though. That's for sure. <coughs> um, I think Blood Moon is still probably pretty good. This is a three color deck on the other side. It seems like it's mostly mostly red and black with like maybe a minor white splash, so maybe not. Better than light. Probably better than Lava Dark though. Flame Slash seems iffy though. You just, you just know, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll even two Blood Moons, and you know, um, on the off chance that they bring in uh, pro red creatures, I'll bring in Pyrite Spell Bomb, which also is better than Lava Dart in that it's uh, able to deal with Stoneforge Mystic instead of, I mean, without having to sacrifice a land, which Lava Dart uh, does, so. Alright, well. Uh, oh yeah, actually, maybe let's also play Shattering Spring, I'm going to think about it. How much do we want to hedge against the possibility that they have uh, pro-red creatures? 
Oh, I really, I really like the one-drop creatures. Well, let's take a risk. Um, hopefully their white splash is not super big. Uh, and if it is, hopefully the Blood Moons will get them. But, you know, I, I don't want to cut a, a Prowess creature for the Spell Bomb, so... I'm just going to run it like this, and I think the um, Shattering Sprees are pretty good. Alright, let's see. <clears throat> and of course Oblivion Stone is, you know, at least some possibility of dealing with pro creatures, so it's not like we've got, we've got absolutely nothing. You know, beggars can't be choosers. And does seem decent. Question is to place with Spear Turn 1? I think the answer is yes. I'm not so sure they're going to present something that we need to stop next turn. Looks like we're going to get. Fatal pushed, so I'm not going to just blow the firebolt right away. So let's uh, see what the. Uh... Oh, no stone forge, so I mean, there's that. Man, a little bit, uh, getting a little bit uh, light on the mana. You know, what can you do? Got 24 lands, I mean, you know, so at least we get to complain. With 20 lands, you know, I guess I guess we couldn't. Um, oh, so they're playing around Blood Moon, I and mean, we've only got two. So, well, we'll see if they're playing around Blood Moon is ultimately worth it. Eh, I'm just going to fire this off just, uh, just because I probably want to play it anyway once I hit a third land. Okay, there we go. Now, so this could eat a, I mean, something, but of course, you know, they will take another two damage, which is at least, you know, that was pretty good. Or unless they have a uh, Cow's Guile, okay. Alrighty. So do we put Obosh in the hand, or do we just plop the Oblivion Stone? I'll plop the Oblivion Stone, I mean, just because, uh... This makes us it can't get inquisitioned. And we're kind of I mean if we drew a land, I think I'd put Obosh into play, so we'd play it next turn, but we're two turns away from Obosh anyway, so. Alright, well we saved we saved the Oblivion Stone from Thoughtseize. So at least there's that. And that, that could that could really come in handy depending on what exactly they've got. Alright, so I, I I think this is where Obosh goes to hand. And this is where Valakut comes into play tapped as a land. I think of Valakut is kind of like the uh, 21st or 24th lands. Hey, we're pretty uh, we're pretty well equipped to deal with uh, artifact shenanigans. There's that. No. We are a bit soft to Croxa though, which is unfortunate. Um, so hopefully they don't draw that. some lag here. Weird. It's lag that's affecting just this window and not and not MTGO as a whole. It's a little bit unusual. Okay, hopefully I'm gonna turn off auto yields because I'm a little worried it'll auto yield through my next turn. Okay, well I have a feeling this is just gonna eat a terminate, but whatever. I mean, you know, you gotta play to gotta play to win. Or Dreadbore. You can also eat a Dreadbore. Or or Kaskal. I think they've got a lot. Alright. Uh, does it even have anything worthwhile in my graveyard? It didn't really, so at least there's that. <coughs> so they didn't play Castle and Breath. Not sure what that means. Okay, I mean, we could crack Oblivion Stone, but we really don't need to at this point. 
We may we want to save this. Okay, great. That's that's exactly what I wanted to see. I guess we'll lightning bolt right now, just in, on the current right now. If they play like, um, if they play like a uh, sort of fire and ice equip, we want to, you know, incentivize them to use some of their mana. But unfortunately, they they kind of got a sense that we had something. Um, I don't. I highly doubt they play light up the stage. And see, like right here, Oblivion Stone, it's going to end up putting a fake counter on the relic, and then at that point, it's like, because this, because let's 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 not kid ourselves, this whole scar is just going to get a, uh, it's just going to get blown up. And the problem here is they've got enough mana to play Batter Skull and return it to hand, so shattering sprees are a little bit dubious, unfortunately, at this point. Basic lands, we do control basic lands, but yeah. Okay. Alright, cool. Man, they've got a lot of like unconditional creature removal, so this, this is definitely the type of deck where I think Obosh is uniquely less likely to stick. Alright, let's go to the graveyard. Um, I'm a little bit worried about this insta insta getting Kolagons commanded, but I mean, you know, they could have done that previous turn, I think. All right. Um, let's just spin the wheel and see what we got. Yeah, if only Shattering Spree was an instant, then we could play one, kill it, then respond to the other one. So, like, you know, it is what it is. But, actually, this is one thing where Oblivion Stone might come in handy, because I can use this to force them to return Batter Skull, and then I could crack Oblivion Stone in response. So, so it's definitely a good thing to hold on to this Oblivion Stone. Definitely not seeing our own season power match is a little frustrating, but hey, what can you do? <coughs> Lightning Helix? Uh, I don't know about Lightning Helix in face. I don't, I don't know. I guess maybe they got enough burn to actually burn us out. Well, they're definitely going to need to draw more, that's for sure. Maybe they've got a season power mancer. I don't know. Um, so we could, uh, we could just crack Oblivion Stone, but I'll see what I draw on my turn first. More land. Man, double, uh, double firebolting, unfortunately, doesn't exactly seem like the way to go. So I'll probably just end up having to crack the Oblivion Stone, which is not exactly where I wanted to be, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Because of course if we double firebolt it, then we go down to three. It's a little bit dangerous. Alright. Thankfully the relic survives, so it is what it is. Wonder winning on time might be might be uh, a possibility maybe. Alright, I'm really hoping to draw another Valakut. 
Which if we got a lot of leftover lands. Okay, good thing we definitely did not double firebolt. RT. It'd be nice if we could have another season permit serve our own. But you know, it is what it is. Let's see. Oof. Man, problem is is they're gonna get a free crack in with the two tokens. Not really much I can do about that. So let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like we kind of just, uh, end up drawing that much this game. We do of course have, you know, three three Valakut Awakenings and four Season Power Matchers to kind of like break through, but you know. Well, alright. 